Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, we already have a new AMD GPU. Intel has lost their mind. Nvidia actually did screw us, and Intel's high performance gaming GPU is close. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, while the RX 6700 XT was just released for half a second at ridiculous prices, it looks like AMD is gearing up for another failed launch. In a new tweet by leaker Kitty Corgi, he shared some information on Dim Gray Cavefish, which looks to be the codename for Navi23. And that's likely the RX 6600 or 6500 series of GPUs. Either way, according to the tweet, AMD is set to launch the new GPU that's aimed for 1080p gaming sometime in April. Not only that, but it's set to come with 32 compute units or 2048 stream processors, a 64MB Infinity cache, and 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM. The more depressing note is the MSRP of around $384 US. Remember when mid-range cards were in the $200 range? Those were the days. Of course, we know the suggested retail price means nothing right now, so in 2021, a 1080p GPU will likely go for six, seven hundred bucks or more. This is the worst! Now, depressing part aside, he also shared the release date for the upcoming Cezanne based desktop APUs is set for sometime in June. Hopefully, that part is true at least. But first, what do you think is the best way to learn something? Memorizing formulas, lectures, reading a textbook? No, the answer is to just do it. And today's sponsor is built from that principle. Brilliant, the website and app that's made specifically to teach math, science, and computer science. And they teach you by solving problems with fun and interactive lessons. Plus, they have a ton of courses, from geometry fundamentals to machine learning and even cryptocurrency. And they're constantly adding more, which means there's something for everyone. So what are you waiting for? Learn the deeper side of tech by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt, and the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up, it looks like we finally have the official specs and pricing on Intel's 11th gen Rocket Lake CPUs, and there's really only a couple things I want to focus on. If you follow the channel, you've basically seen all of these specs before, from the clocks to support for PCI Express 4.0 and more. The new thing Intel released is pricing, and for the most part it's okay, but the higher end models are just flat insane if you ask me. The 11,900K is $549. What did you say? Is $549. $549. But that's the suggested price for a thousand units or more. The actual price is a whopping $613 on Newegg. $613. Are you kidding me? The suggested price is right at the leaked price we saw a little while back, so that was pretty accurate. And I called that insane even before the higher price. Remember that this is an 8-core CPU. Now, some of the lower-end models are a decent price, to which I will have some affiliate links in the description for those who want to pre-order these. They are there right now. But Intel's flagship is flat absurd. Yes, I get that you can't get the 5900X right now, but you can't get the 11900K either. And remember that this is 8 versus 12 cores. Now, according to Intel's slides, it can beat it at gaming, but it just feels like a real slap in the face. Now, Intel did announce a new adaptive boost that lets the 11,900 models get to 5.3 gigahertz on a couple cores, but it works up to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is definitely looking like a furnace if that temp is even really a thought. Ultimately, I'm very much disappointed. I was really hoping Intel would try and undercut AMD, but they went the full other direction. If anything, this makes the 10th gen look even better. Still, I guess we shall wait for final reviews. Next up for today, I have a major update to a recent video, where I went over reports on a new driver release by Nvidia themselves that seemed to negate the 3060's Ethereum limiter. In that video, I discussed an article that made it seem like it wasn't an accident because it still limits the GPU if it uses more than one card or isn't plugged into a monitor. Well, that was mostly right. I say mostly because it still was an accident. 
at least according to Nvidia's new statement to The Verge that says, quote, a developer driver inadvertently included code used for internal development, which removes the hash rate limiter on RTX 3060 in some configurations. The driver has been removed. Okay, so the in some configurations part of the statement is referring to what I discussed in my video. Though according to video cards, it apparently can work with more than one GPU, but only if they're inserted in the slot, so risers that most all miners use won't work. Plus, you have to use dummy monitors. With that said, what the... Why, NVIDIA? No, seriously. You accidentally shared the wrong driver? How could you screw up so royally? And what exactly happened to the BIOS and the driver handshake crap? Some reported on needing a BIOS mod, but Tom's hardware confirmed that the new driver is all you need. Oh, and the driver has been removed? So? That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Do you not know what the internet is? It's already everywhere and completely accessible to whoever wants it. I was hoping this was more of a way to let gamers who want to mine in their spare time do so, but nope. And the response makes everything so much worse. What happens when you inadvertently release the full driver without it? And why did you even have a driver that doesn't use the limiter for developers or anyone? Whatever. NVIDIA, you seriously screwed up. And lastly for today, Intel shared a short video for their upcoming high-performance gaming GPUs at GTC 2021. In that video, you can see it mentions their HPG GPUs, but what's interesting is that Intel actually shared a couple messages within the teaser. For one, they showed these numbers, which apparently coincide with an IP address to this site. And as you can see, it mentions a scavenger hunt set for March 26th at 9 a.m. PST. The second clue is coordinates to Niagara Falls, which is likely the codename of their upcoming GPUs. There's also been yet another benchmark leak that shows a 512 EU Intel GPU. Basically, Intel's upcoming high-performance gaming GPUs could be right around the corner, and they could be a serious contender. Let's just hope gamers can actually buy it. So while that does it for today, all the disappointments aside, what are you looking forward to most in 2021? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like talking all things gaming hardware, make sure to check out the GamerMail Discord server. And as always, have a great day!